How about exercise? Many people feel that if you exercise, you can forget about everything else. Well, there are examples for this. For example, in East Finland, the number one in heart disease deaths in the whole world. And who are these people that are dying there? Well, they're lumberjacks, lean, muscular lumberjacks. They're eating about 5,000 calories a day to keep up their energy, but it's mostly dairy products. Tremendous death rate. They have more widows there in the 30 to 40 year old range than any place in the country, any place in the world. And in North Korea, which is one of the worst death rate areas for heart disease in East Finland, in fact, North Korea has been number one in Finland in heart disease deaths. They decided to take the matters in their own hands, and they've cut down on their fat and cholesterol, and in four years' time, instead of number one, they became number four. That's what you ought to do. It's just a little community, a little county of 180,000 people, but that's the way to do it. How about marathon runners? Does running save you? Certainly not. Every day you find a story about a marathon runner dropping dead while he's running. I know I remember the case of Goodlow Byron, uh, he's a Bethesda, Maryland uh, um, congressman, and he had run six marathons in his 40s, and one day he was doing a nice, easy 10-mile run, and he just dropped dead while he was running. They opened him up and looked at his arteries, and they were a massive, filled with plaques. wonder how he's able to run at all. No, running isn't going to save you. If you're going to be on the American diet and you want to do vigorous exercise, don't bother having yourself examined by a physician. Just see a good lawyer and make sure your will is in order. How is it that the experts are so confused? Recently, there was a large press release by the National <laughs> Academy of Science saying that cholesterol doesn't even count. Uh, Dr. Olson wrote the report, and Dr. Olson's convinced that everybody should have their share of eggs and meat and so on. The fact that he uh, is a consultant and gets paid by the very agencies he wants you to eat their products, like the Meat Institute and the Egg Institute, of course, doesn't affect his mind. Uh, he eats his eggs uh, even if they weren't working for them. And he confused a lot of people because he completely ignored the scientific evidence in this country and abroad. He only examined the American Heart Association studies that everybody knows has failed. And he said, well, the American Heart Association studies have failed. Therefore, all diets will fail for heart disease. And that's unfortunate when you have experts like that that confuse the public. I should say that as far as examples, the best example would be, as I mentioned at other times, the Taramar Indians, because there is a group exactly on the diet I prescribe. They have tremendous endurance. They can run 150 miles without stopping. Heart disease is an unknown quantity with the Taramar Indians and with probably 35 populations around the world that have been studied. So as far as heart disease is concerned, we've learned quite a bit. And I think probably the main thing we've learned about heart disease is that it's preventable, and in many cases, it's reversible. And if we go to the experts, like Dr. Robert Whistler, University of Chicago Medical School, and Dr. William Costelli of the Framingham Study, uh, they're going to convince us that if we can get cholesterol levels lowered so that your cholesterol is below 150 to 160 when you're 50 years old, or I might say below 100 plus your age with a maximum of 160, that your thoughts about heart disease would not have to frighten you because the chance of you getting heart disease in are very, very, very slight. Certainly a fraction of what's happening in our country. You would be well advised to take the words of the experts, the progressive experts, and the results of our kind of studies and the many studies around the world that have been done and to follow it. Now, this dietary approach, as I advocate, is now being accepted by large medical institutions. For example, UCLA has now modeled a program called Cheer After Our Diet. UC Davis is using our diet almost exactly as it is to lower cholesterol levels most effectively. Doctors around the country are using this diet. I would say there might be over 3,000 doctors using this diet now for their patients. And we send them little diet pamphlets to help them prescribe the diet to their patients. So there's no question we're getting acceptance all around the country, in fact, around the world, using this dietary approach. 
It certainly demonstrates that thousands and thousands of people are interested, if they can only get the information, to change their diet to save their lives. In fact, I think the people are far ahead of the health professionals in adopting these ideas in order to help themselves. And I hope that in the period to come, when the American Heart Association is really forced to recommend to the American people the recommendations they now are recommending in the Mr. Fit study, the largest study they've ever had, by that time, and that's a little late though, that'll help the rest of the country. But as far as you're concerned, you know what to do right now. You've got to get your cholesterol level down below 160, and heart disease then should be something that is just a vague memory.